So given data or by looking at organisms, you can actually create cladograms yourself um, for different organisms. And so I'm going to walk you through that process and do a couple of examples or look at a couple of examples. But this is definitely the, something that comes with practice. So you just need to keep trying to do them because it is, it's kind of like solving a puzzle. So the um, first step is to kind of look at traits in the organism and try and find traits that differ among the different organisms that you're looking looking at. Like you don't want to only look at traits that they all have. You want to make sure you're identifying ones that differ. Um, and so this is another way to kind of think of this is ask yourself questions about the organism and then put them into question or put them into the form of they either have it or they don't or present or absent. So like to, to clarify a little bit more, like you can't say like longer and shorter. Um, you want the trait to be like they have legs that are this long and they don't. That's like a yes, no question. So they're not comparative values. You need to put it in such a way that it's yes, no, or present absent. Once you have traits that you can express that way as yes or no or present or absent, then you can organize that into a table. Um, that The table's purpose is to help you see patterns. Like you want to identify groups that have yeses and nos in the same kind of organization. So the table's helping you see patterns. As you're looking at the table and seeing those patterns, you're going to be looking for primitive and derived characters. So what are the traits that everybody has within the table? And where do you have um, groups or organisms that have the trait and others don't? And so that will allow you to establish progressively smaller and smaller in-groups. So you ideally want to go like one organism at a time. So say your table has five organisms. You want an in-group that has four organisms, then an in-group that has three, then an in-group that has two, and then a final in-group that just has one organism. And as you get those progressively smaller in-groups, those are going to line up with a branch point or a node in your cladogram. So that's the basic process. Let's look at an example of a cladogram and a table. So this is a table comparing um, some traits in some um, organisms, some vertebrates. And so you have the organisms lined up here and some traits. So the person who made this table looked at the organisms and decided on some traits to compare between them. Um, and then you see that they've organized them into yes and no questions. So um, all of them are yeses for having a note accord. Um, the lancelet does not have vertebrae, but the lamprey, salmon, lizard, and rabbit do. So you have a pattern of no and four yeses. Hinged jaw is two noes and three yeses. Attach the, being a tetrapod or having four limbs is two, or sorry, three noes and two yeses. And then mammary glands are four noes and one yes. And so this table is really clearly showing this pattern that you want to aim for where you have progressively smaller in-groups based on the traits that you've used. And so if I look uh, at this um, cladogram that was created from this table, I see that I have um, the note accord trait as an ancestral or primitive character. So it's down here at the bottom. Everybody has that trait. And then I have my first split here, and that's the vertebrae split. So everybody who's a yes for vertebrae is after that split. The lancelet is now my out group over here because they don't have it. Then I have a next smaller in group. So this is the in group for hinged jaws. All three of them have hinged jaws. The lamprey and the lancelet don't, so they're the out group now. Then I have another smaller in-group. This is an in-group for being a tetrapod. So the lizard and the rabbit are both tetrapods. The lancelet, the lamprey, and the salmon are now the out-group. And then the smallest in-group is for mammary glands. Only the rabbit has mammary glands. The lancelet, the lamprey, the salmon, and the lizard are all the out-group. So again, progressively smaller in-groups, progressively larger out-groups. You could also think of it that way. Um, based on trait differences. So the derived characters are these ones here for the different in-groups. The mammary glands a derived character for rabbits. Tetrapod is a derived character for lizards and rabbits. Hinge jaw is a derived character for salmon, lizard, and rabbit. And vertebrae is a uh, derived character for lamprey, salmon, lizard, and rabbits. 
Okay, so one more example. So I've got another table, and this one's done a little differently. There's just an X for a yes and a blank for a no. But again, same idea. I have a series of traits and a series of organisms, and then I filled in the table based on whether organisms either have it or don't have it. So yes or no questions, not comparison data. Um, so again, on this table, I can already see a really clear pattern. I have four yeses, three yeses, two yeses, and one yes. So vertebrae is again going to be uh, an ancestral character. Whoops, let me come over here. Let me, see, let me use my eraser. There we go. So my ancestral character is going to be vertebrae. Everybody has that trait. And then I'm going to have my first branch point here which is going to be for the trait limbs. So again, two pairs of limbs. And that has buff bullfrog, kangaroo, and, kangaroo and human in the in-group, and it has shark in the out-group. So I'm going to put shark here. He's now in the out-group. Everybody else must come after. Okay, so then I'm going to go to my next branch point. And so... My next smallest in-group is based on mammary glands. So I have two organisms that have mammary glands. The bullfrog doesn't. So I'm going to put mammary glands here as my next derived character. And I'm going to put the bullfrog here because it's now in the out-group. It's not included here. And then my next divergence is this the human being the only one that has it in this cladogram, placenta. So the placenta now puts the kangaroo in the outgroup. Oh, whoops, I ended up, I'd already drawn that, sorry. So the placenta should be here and that Whoops, sorry. Let me do this again. It's too close together. Okay, I'm getting, let me give myself a little room here. So there's my mammary gland and my mammary gland. I've got my through there. And then so my next split is for the placenta. So let me put placenta here. And the only organism to have the placenta is the human, and that is the kangaroo in the out group for the placenta. There we go. Okay, so again, now I've made a cladogram. All of my organisms, notice, are across the top. So my living organisms are across the top. Um, my ancestral character is down here, representing that everybody has it, and then I made progressively smaller in-groups and out-groups um, based on the presence or absence of the trait.